Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I am swatching my 10 favorite Lisa Eldridge lipsticks for you. If you've been watching my channel for the past several weeks, you might have noticed that I've been throwing up lip swatches and side-by-side swatches of Lisa Eldridge lipsticks by Color Family. And I think the reason I did that is because the sort of video I would have loved to have had when I was trying to decide out of all of these expensive, beautiful $36 lipsticks, which one is for me. So I thought if I could do kind of like a comparison of them all, describe them to you, that it would make it easier for you if you were kind of like standing on that precipice, okay, I wanna get one, which one is for me. So I have had a lot of fun doing those. I will link them all for you in the description box down below if you haven't seen them, but I've done reds, pinks, nudes, peaches and corals, and berry lipsticks. And somebody asked somewhere amidst the comments, would you do your top 10 favorite? And I was like, ooh, that's a good idea. Here's where I tell you I don't have every single lipstick that Lisa makes. I have almost all. There are four that she has, four shades that she has created that I don't have in my collection. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not just buying everything. I'm buying things that I will actually use. And I feel like everything that I have here gets used. Some get used more than others, hence the 10 in front of me. And that's really what I did is I decided to actually pull out of the lipsticks that were the most used by the way they looked in the bullet. Mainly because I was, I have like this container right here and all of my Lisa Eldridge lipsticks live in here and I was starting, oh, I love this one and oh, I love that one. And pretty soon I had 20 lipsticks out in front of me and there is no way I could pick a favorite. I was like, what do I do? And then I thought, you know what? Look at how much they've been used and abused and the ones that have gotten the most use, those are the ones obviously that you reach for the most, the ones that you maybe love but haven't really, it hasn't clicked here yet. So let's take a look at these lipsticks. I have six Luxuriously Lucent and I have four True Velvets for you. The first one, and I fell in love with this lipstick the instant it came out, but I didn't realize how much I use it until I took a look at the bullet. Because I don't know that I would have picked this as one of my favorite shades, but it's definitely one of my most used. This is called Kitten Mischief. Here is Kitten Mischief. It's a super easy, warm lipstick to wear. It's like almost like my perfect nude. It's the sort of thing, I'll tell you, on the days that I have to take my kids to school and I've showered but I don't have a face of makeup on yet, I throw my big sunglasses and I put on this lipstick. Um, I also wear it on days when I'm working. I work at a dentist's office and I'm in a mask all day because it's comfortable, it gives my lips just a little bit of color. I find that I do reach for the Luxuriously Lucent formula a lot at work, but this is a one that I've been using for you know the last six months regularly. It's in my scrubs pocket. I I pull it out, pull my mask down, you know, throw some on, and I can do it without a mirror. That's why I love this shade. This shade in Kitten Mischief is definitely one of my most used and one of my favorites. I don't know if you can see it, but Lisa has her logo imprinted on the front of the luxuriously lucent lipsticks, and I can tell this one's gotten a lot of use because the top of the L is missing. <laughs> when you have more than 200 lipsticks like I do in my collection, the fact that some of them get used as much as these have really do show that they are favorites. This next shade here is one that I reached for nonstop all last summer and in through the fall, and I have been using a ton this year as well. This one is called Spirited Away. This is Spirited Away, it has a little bit more um, kind of earthiness, a little bit more like earth tones, or, uh, not quite a brown, but it has some of those warm leaning tones and just a hint of rose, just enough to bring color and life to my face. I feel like my makeup can look kind of weird and then I put this lipstick on and it all settles in and it looks really, really nice. It, it is um, just a, a hair cooler than um, Kitten Mischief, but it is such an easy lipstick to wear. I love this so much. This is one that I had to pull out of my purse this morning to do this video. I was like, oh, I know where our Spirited Away is, and <laughs> it's not with the rest of my lipsticks on my little uh, acrylic tray here. I had to pull it out of my purse. Lisa Summer Release of Lipsticks 
really had my heart going pitter-pat. Oh my goodness, there were some beautiful shades. One of the new shades that she released in the Luxuriously Lucent formula, I fell head over heels for. This is the sort of brown that I wished I had in the 90s, and I never really had a shade that worked like this. Um, this is the shade Meet Me in Berlin. Here is Meet Me in Berlin. It's definitely a brown, but so wearable. I love this lipstick. This is one that if I'm wearing kind of like a darker smoky eye, um, I reach for this because it's not quite like a real soft beige kind of nude shade, but it has a little oomph to it. But it's not too much because it's sheer and it's not like too deep or intense of a brown. I don't know, there's something magical about Meet Me in Berlin. This has been one of those that I have not been able to stop reaching for. This is another lipstick that I can tell by the shape of the bullet as well as, you know, how close it is to the top of the logo on here that this is another one of those that I reach for all the time. This is the shade Painterly. So to me, this is not your straight up kind of mauve lipstick. I have a ton of pinky mauve lipsticks and I thought that's kind of what this was until I saw it swatched next to everything else. It definitely does have more of kind of like that pink lean to it, but if you're looking at the shade here, there is some depth, there is some earthiness, there is a little bit of brown in here, there is some richness, and it has the ability to be more than just your basic mauve lipstick. It's not overpowering, it's not too much, it is a pretty lip without being a statement lip. And I think that sometimes that's what I need if I'm wearing a really bold eye look, or if I'm going for a really natural kind of bare skin, almost no eye makeup look with some bold brows. I need a lipstick that's not gonna be too much. And this is one that I reach for all the time. This is the deepest, darkest, luxuriously lucent that Lisa makes. And this is new for 2022. This is the shade Night Thoughts. This is the lipstick shade that I have been on the hunt for. I had one very similar to this in the 90s and I loved it so much and then it got discontinued and I was like, ah, you know, raising my angry fist to the sky. <laughs> um, and I have since that moment kind of been on the hunt and I probably have tried 20 different lipsticks since that point where I was looking for something that was, you know, cool and deep and a little vampy leaning without being too much because, you know, fair. If it's too much, it's just like, whoa, that's a roll look. And I, I wanted something that would have that depth, but not be too much. And I feel like this is the perfect balance of not being too purple toned, not being too kind of pinky magenta. It really is in a beautiful space. There is a little bit, if you're looking at it, there is a little bit of brown here. There is, I mean, it, it's such a nuanced shade. It has, um, a lot of depth to it and it works so well with so many different types of blushes and eyeshadows it's just kind of like a chameleon lipstick it works with everything if you've watched my channel at all you know i'm a devoted red lipstick lover so you may not be surprised to find out that the last luxuriously lucent that is in this lineup is Palazzo. This is the red, lightweight, sheer, creamy lipstick that I had been dying for Lisa to release. I was running out of space on this hand and I had to start swatching over here, but uh, this is Palazzo, an absolutely stunning red lipstick. This is definitely the sort of everyday lipstick for me. Some reds I feel like are occasions, like I know that I am gonna be doing something and I'm not gonna be eating, I'm not gonna be drinking, I'm just gonna be you know, at this event or doing this one thing and I can wear a certain lipstick that I know needs a little more hand holding, maybe a little more high maintenance that would be disturbed by you know, snacking, uh, beverages, um, too much chatting. So if I just wanna look fabulous, I know which red to pull for. If I know that I'm gonna be you know, living life and I want a red lipstick, I want one like this because first of all, it's comfortable, it's creamy, it's hydrating. I also feel like it's kind of like a, even though red can be a high maintenance color, this is not a high maintenance red because if it does accidentally, you know, get outside of my lip line, the wind blows my hair into my face and, you know, as I pull the hair out, you know, it trails product up my face. It's really easy just to dab it and it doesn't stain my skin. Um, it's one of those lipsticks where as I drink from a coffee cup or I eat a meal, 
Um, it doesn't end up in places where it shouldn't be. I don't actually ever really find this on my teeth. Some other reds, oh my goodness. I have to be so careful that I don't get them on my teeth. And this is one where I feel like it's just, it's just easy and comfortable to wear. So I have red lipsticks fall into two different categories, high maintenance and low maintenance. And this is kind of like an everyday low maintenance red for me. Let's move into the True Velvets. This is one that I have used so much, I can definitely tell it's starting to flatten out. It is not keeping its like upright shape no matter how much I try, it's just starting to get to be a little flat nub and this is Velvet Muse. Here is Velvet Muse. It is such a beautiful, wearable, kind of pink leaning nude. This formulation is one that the minute I saw it, like even before I tried it, when she debuted these, I think in 2018, I think it was 2018, fall of 2018, I saw the images of the bullets, I saw the images of people wearing it, I was like, I need that lipstick. And up to that point, I had been more of a sheer, lightweight, cream lipstick lover, like this sort of formula would have been exactly what I would be hoping she would release. But when I saw these mattes, I was like, Yes, had to have it. And I'll tell you, this formula really raised the bar for my expectations of what a matte lipstick could deliver. Because for years, I was used to matte lipsticks from the drugstore that were drying, that were chalky, that were uncomfortable, that would tug or skip on the skin, that would leave my lips dried out. And even high-end brands like MAC, I cannot wear the MAC Retro Matte anymore because this lipstick has shown me there is other options. And I know it's they're not on the same price point, not at all, but I feel like if you want to invest in a beautiful, comfortable matte lipstick, the velvet mattes are absolutely worth every penny. And Velvet Muse is a favorite. This next True Velvet lipstick was one that I couldn't decide between this one and another one. And, and it came down to literally rolling the bullet up and saying, okay, which one has seen more use? Which one is shorter? And it turned out to be this. This is Velvet Blush Lightly. Here is Blush Lightly. It's one of those lipsticks like Painterly that has kind of like a mauve lean to it. It is, um, on my skin tone, definitely one of the more cooler pinks that I reach for on a regular basis. And I was really dithering between Blush Lightly and Velvet Blush. And Velvet Blush was one that I think came out in 2020 and I fell head over heels for, but I always found myself kind of blotting it. I'd put it on full force and then I'd blot it down. And this is exactly what I was looking for, a lipstick that I can put on full force straight from the bullet, get the exact shade that I'm looking for without it being too overpowering or too intense. I feel like Lisa is a bit of a magician when it comes to colors because when I put on her lipsticks, so many of them have this ability to just instantly bring light and life to my face. Even if I'm not wearing any other makeup, Lisa's lipsticks are the ones that I reach for habitually on a, you know, throw my sunglasses on, a little lipstick and out the door I go to run errands or to drop my kids at school or on the days I just can't be bothered to put on any other type of makeup I almost always reach for one of Lisa's lipsticks because it does this amazing kind of magic trick where it brings out some of the undertones that I have in my skin on on a no makeup day it brings a little life and vibrancy I just think that she has this magic ability to create shades that look good on so many different skin tones. And this is one of the ones that is kind of like, you know, all right, not gonna be wearing anything else. What can I put on that's gonna, you know, bring a little life, a little color, and not be too overpowering? I love Blush Lightly. Talk about a lipstick that's losing its slant. It is definitely becoming nearly flat. This is one of the first ones I ever purchased from Lisa. This one's called Velvet Morning. Here is Velvet Morning, definitely a brighter, kind of fiery red shade. This is one of those lipsticks that I love to reach for in the middle of winter when I'm looking a little pale and I'm looking a little, like, you know, need a little sunshine. This is one of those that instantly perks my face up. Um, I Before this lipstick, I'll be honest, I did not reach for warm leaning reds. I was reached for more blue reds or neutral reds. And this is one of those lipsticks that really kind of pushed me over the edge of, yeah, I do like warm red lipsticks and I have a lot more and it's all because of Velvet Morning. 
before I show you my most used Lisa Eldridge lipstick, I thought I'd do an honorable mention. This was one that I kept putting in and out, in and out, in and out, and I couldn't do like, I don't have room for it. So let me show you the one that I have fallen in love with and I have reached for so much, but didn't quite make it into the top 10. It's one of Lisa's other formulas. This is the insanely saturated formula and this is the shade Strawberry Shock. If you've never tried one of the insanely saturated lipsticks, I feel like they have a slightly different feel from the True Velvets. The True Velvets tend to feel a little bit creamier. This almost has a slightly powdery feel to it. And I'm not saying that it's powdery or dry, but there's something about it texturally that's different. So here is Strawberry Shock, and compared to Velvet Morning, I feel like Velvet Morning is definitely more orange leaning, and this has a little bit of almost like a pink lean to it. And I feel like it it's that slightly pink but still red that makes it so interesting on the lips. This was like my favorite red lipstick to wear this summer. I wore this so much. Um, but it's a beautiful formula. I feel like I do get a little bit more longevity out of the True Velvets, but I have really been loving Strawberry Shock. Talk about used and abused. <laughs> this is my most used Lisa Eldridge lipstick. This is Velvet Ribbon. This is the perfect red in my eyes. I love this lipstick so much. This, is, this one and Velvet Morning are the two that I've had the longest. When she made her initial launch, it was just three red lipsticks. I still have those three. And Velvet Morning and Velvet Ribbon are the ones that I use the most. And this one obviously gets the most use out of all of these. But I've also had this one the longest. This is one of those that I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, maybe... Nah, I have some time left on it. But if I really get into a red lipstick mood this fall and winter, I'm going to need a new one of these. This is such a easy, beautiful red to wear. Let me put it on for you. Here is Velvet Ribbon compared to all the rest. Aren't they just gorgeous? But this lipstick here is the one that not only I've had the longest and I've used the most, but I feel like is the one that, that does that beautiful thing that a lipstick can do. This red lipstick has the power to transform me. <laughs> Not just, you know, the way that my face looks, but there is something powerful about a lipstick in my mind. The days that I'm like, oh, I don't feel good. I got to get stuff done. I pull out what to me is a power lipstick and it kind of infuses me with the ability to do like, okay, I've got my stuff together. I know what I'm doing. I've got my power lipstick on. Let's go. And this is the one that I reach for. This is also the lipstick that I reach for when I want a really dramatic look because it's a bold, bright, intense shade. I love this one so much. I also got the accompanying liner in ribbon. It's just spectacular. It makes for the ultimate perfect red lip. I love this one so much. This is basically the reason my love for this lipstick that I continue to buy all the rest because I remember that feeling that I had when I got this lipstick and I wore it and I wore it and I wore it and I wore it down to a little nub <laughs> that I realized that Lisa makes not just makeup but specifically lipsticks that speak to my heart. And as a lipstick snob and a lipstick junkie, I definitely can't ever like just, okay, avert my eyes when Lisa has any lipstick launch. I am right there on my phone setting an alarm to not miss it. Thank you so much for watching today and thank you to the person who suggested that I do this video. I have a deep and abiding love of Lisa Eldridge lipsticks, obviously, because I have 32 of them, but it's fun to be able to show them to you, to describe them and um, maybe impart some of my love to you. I would love to know if you have a favorite from Lisa, which is your most reached for, which one gets the most use out of your collection, or if you haven't yet to try any of Lisa's lipsticks, what lipstick is your, like the one that you repurchase or gets used and abused in your collection? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have an incredible day and I'll see you again soon.